of intermolecular forces. What are the different ways that atoms can interact amongst each other? Um, and so we're going to go through our list. The first type of intermolecular force is called a dispersion for, uh, force. Dispersion force. And these act and this dispersion force has a ton of different names um, that all mean the same thing. These are also called induced dipole, induced dipole. These are called Van der Waals interactions. Or they are called London dispersion forces. So this type of interaction has four different names. And for us, these all mean the same thing. So this type of interaction is the weakest, right? It is the weakest type of interaction, the weakest type of force two molecules can have with each other. However, even though it's the weakest, all molecules have this. Every single molecule, it's going to have dispersion forces if they interact with another molecule. And so let's actually talk about, you know, what is a dispersion force? And really to talk about a dispersion force, we have to understand what a dipole is. Not a... Uh, that that looks like a P, not a P pole, a dipole. All right, so di means two, pole means pole, I guess. Uh, uh, it, you know, think about the poles of the world, right? Um, North Pole and South Pole. It's the ends. And this is a concept back from General Chemistry one, and I'm going to be saying this a lot during the semester. Um, I hope you remember what you learned in general chemistry one, because this class is designed to pick up right where we left off. So I'm assuming you know a lot of the stuff you learned in general chemistry one. If it's been a while for you for general chemistry one, or, you know, you didn't really understand what was going on in general chemistry one, but you eked out a grade anyways, you need to work a little bit harder because you need to review a lot of the stuff we talked about in general chemistry one to get general chemistry two. Just like if I was taking German two, I would need to know what happened in German one to continue. Um, but I'll, I'll try to help you out with that. So a dipole. A dipole is if you have a, uh, an atom And in that atom, you have electrons, uneven distribution. So E minus, I'm going to be using this a lot. Every time I write E minus, that means an electron. And so right now I have electrons on the top of my atom and not and no electrons on the bottom. This kind of confirmation of electrons is what we call a dipole. And so what I would say is I would say, well, with this dipole, the top of this atom has a partial negative charge. The bottom of that atom has a partial positive charge. So this funny looking S, this is the symbol for partial charge. And by partial, I mean not one, not two. So maybe the top of this atom has a negative 0.7 charge. The bottom of this atom has a positive 0.7.
right? That's what partial means. And these numbers are just made up, but that's what a dipole is. And so a dispersion force is induced dipole, induced dipole. What does the word induce mean? So let's, let's take a look at this. So our example of how this works. So we have an atom. We're going to call this atom one. And we have a second atom. Atom two. Right now between the two atoms no intermolecular forces they are not close enough to interact also right now they have no dipoles they are non-polar right polar is a term that um, was talked about at the end of gen chem one if you took it here um i will talk about polarity in a uh, in a little bit um, but polar and nonpolar are things you need to understand to do well in our first section on intermolecular forces so again this might be something you need to review if the word polar means nothing to you right now but let's go back to our scenario we have two atoms they're not interacting they don't have dipoles, they're nonpolar molecules. And so let's say, okay, now they come close. They are now interacting. So they have IMFs. What will happen for these two atoms if they are nonpolar? Let's say the blue atom puts its electrons on one side. So the blue atom just created a dipole or had a dipole induced by interacting with the green atom, right? I, I have induced a dipole because I'm interacting with somebody. So one side of my atom is now partial negative. The other side of my atom is partial positive. Well, if the blue atom reacts like that, the green atom will see that and it will say, oh, the blue atom is showing me a negative charge. I'm going to move my electrons away because I don't want my electrons to interact with the electrons of the blue atom. So my dipole is the opposite for the green atom. The dipole I'm going to have will be partial positive to interact with the blue atoms partial negative. That's what induced dipole induced dipole means. You bring two atoms together, they rearrange their electrons to have a favorable interaction. This is a dispersion force. This is the weakest type of force there is. All atoms have that. Right. Any questions about the dispersion force? Just the definition of it. So since every atom has the dispersion forces, one of the question is, how do we rank the strength? How do we rank, rank the strength of dispersion forces? So if I have two different systems, how do I know which one has stronger dispersion forces in it? There are two things you are looking for to determine the strength of a dispersion force. The first thing you want to look at is the size of an atom. 
The second thing you want to look for is the shape of an atom. And for size, the bigger the molar mass, the stronger the dispersion force. Or the way we actually measure this in chemistry is boiling point. So the heavier my molecule is, the higher its boiling point is. And for us as chemists, we know that if boiling point goes up, that means your dispersion forces are stronger or your intermolecular forces are stronger. So that's the first thing we look for, the size. The second thing we look for is the shape. And for this, the more linear you are, the higher the boiling point. And so a lot of times when I say BP, that's boiling point, which again means higher dispersion forces. So that's all you need to look for. You need to look for how big is my atom and you have to look for how linear it is. And the reason for the shape is if I'm looking at two atoms that are linear versus two atoms that are circles, the linear atoms have more surface area to interact with. If you have more surface area to interact with, you get stronger interaction compared to a sphere. And that's also going along with the size. The bigger you are, the more mat, the more area, the more electrons you have to interact with. So that's how we determine strength of dispersion forces. We look at its size and we look at its shape. Any questions about that? All right, if not, it is question time. Yay. So during this class, I don't like to talk forever and ever and ever. I like you to see if you can apply the concepts we just talked about. So we have various questions that I'm going to ask you. And so we start with question one of the semester, which has the strongest 